your temporal lobes right here are hurt. Yeah. Usually if you just have ADD, they get worse. I just gave you Adderall and went, okay, you had ADD, that's it. Not gonna be the end. What a joy to meet you. I'm excited to be here and nervous, but very excited. <laughs> okay, so your goal, if I read things right, is to clear the brain fog. And the brain fog really started after you got COVID. Mm -hmm. And on our show, we've talked a lot about COVID because we've seen a ton mm -hmm. of brain fog. Yeah. I had COVID um, spring of 2022, kind of went through it fine, but came out with just the worst brain fog that I have not been able to really shift. Um, it kind of comes in waves, but I don't think I've, I have not cleared it at all. So I'm just constantly in this haze, you know, um, and it's scary. <laughs> And then it just could all also be trauma, grief, stress, just sort or of. Or it stacks. Or it stacks. And they're, they're all involved. Yeah. You were diagnosed with ADD as a kid on Ritalin. Yeah, I guess right. I was diagnosed. I mean, I didn't really do like a proper assessment. It was kind of like back then you just went to the doctor and I think my mom said, well, she's having a hard time focusing in school. And they said, okay, well, here's a pill. Here's Ritalin. And maybe, and it's my problem with my profession, is they gave your mom a checklist or the teachers a checklist and you scored six out of nine of those symptoms. You still do, by the way. Because <laughs> I gave you a very similar checklist. Oh, Lord. Okay. We gave back then. And that's how they diagnosed ADD. Yeah. Where I'm like, nah, you should really look at someone's brain. Because if you don't look, you really don't know. Um, but if you're holding it all together and you tend to be distracted, the chronic stress just will wash over you. And then if you add the inflammation from COVID, um, yeah, it can be a lot. I mean, you just went public with versus diagnosis and you want to raise awareness for it that's clearly getting outside of yourself and yeah. sharing. My wife often says pain shared is pain divided. Pain shared is pain divided. Mm. And you know, if you can take pain to purpose, it helps. Yeah, I mean, I think that is for me is the goal. Um, there's been, you know, I've had to sort of navigate this in such a quiet way um, because of who my husband is and not wanting to, you know, his privacy is obviously of like the utmost importance. And, you know, I'd gotten a text not too long ago from someone who was like, I'm so sorry that you had to come out with this publicly. But it's almost like being in silence was even worse, you know, like not being able to have a community, not being able to talk to anybody about it. Um, and trying to navigate this whole thing um, quietly has been really hard and stressful. And I want to connect to this community now. Um, the FTD community, dementia community, um, raise awareness around brain health. Okay, here's your scan. So we do a study called SPECT, and SPECT looks at blood flow and activity, looks at how your brain works. And it basically shows us three things. Good activity, too little, or too much. And then my job is to balance it. Your temporal lobes right here are hurt. Yeah. 
Now, when you concentrate, the front part actually gets a bit better. Your temporal lobes get a bit better. Um, usually, if you just have ADD, they get worse. So, ADD is when you try to concentrate, your brain tends to shut down. Um, and your brain actually tends to turn on a bit when you work. So, if I just gave you Adderall and went, okay, you have ADD, that's it not going to be the answer. The answer is going to be fix your temporal lobes. Here, your emotional brain is really busy, which can go with depression. Mm. And when you focus, you get anxious. Yeah. And, but your cerebellum is good and it's healthy. It activates with concentration and clearly COVID disrupted things, and it made your emotional brain work too hard. So put you more at risk, not only with what's going on, but just by the fact that your brain's too busy. So I looked earlier, I have a program that helps me predict oh, okay. if I can make it better, and I can. My goodness. So how are we gonna repair it? We're gonna avoid anything that hurts it, we're going to do a whole bunch of things mm -hmm. that help. So past trauma affecting both your temporal lobe, low activity here, that's making you look like you have ADD. Um, so I don't have ADD, ADHD. Symptomatically you do. That's how doctors usually diagnose it. At rest, you have an ADD brain. We try to concentrate. It gets a bit better. I see what I you're like saying. that, which is why I'm not just going to give you Adderall. Doesn't mean I won't think about it later on. Right. Right. And the cool thing about you doing this with us, I'm going to be your doctor. So, and Thank I'm you. thrilled, excited. Thank you. Uh, if I can brighten your mood, yeah. cognitively you might feel better. Yes. Because often, do you, have you ever heard of pseudo dementia? No. It's dementia that causes depression. And then when you treat the depression, their memory brightens. Okay. So, but you're already seeing, we have multiple layers here from ADD as a child, head trauma as a child, family separation, um, chronic stress, COVID. So we're, we're like, just, we're going to take this stack apart. Okay. Yeah. So what do I want to do? Well, I'm going to give you two packets a day. And in those two packets is going to be multiple vitamin, fish oil, and a brain boost. It's called brain and memory power boost. All by itself, that one will help your memory. Amazing. But the, Combination is my repair formula. So in that will be omega-3 fatty acids as well. Let me give you happy saffron. Um, that's for your mood. Mm -hmm. Saffron, zinc, curcumin. There are 24 randomized controlled trials showing it equally effective to antidepressants. Amazing. And then calm my brain. I would just do three at bedtime. Three at bedtime. Okay. Right. Thank you.